Hello everyone, welcome to Tutorial Expert. In this video I'm going to show you how to transform videos to animations. So by the end of this video you're going to learn how to create something like this. So to begin you need to install Stable Diffusion. I'm going to provide a link in the description for this. Make sure you download this one and once you have downloaded and unzip it, launch it. This basically tells it where do you want to install the UI launcher. Make sure that clean install is turned on and then just click on install. Once it's installed you're going to get this message and the folder should pop up where it was installed. Once the installation is complete you want to open this file and you can pin it to taskbar as said here. Let's open it up. Now since I have Python installed I need to deinstall it, but if you don't have Python installed, it will say something like no modulos found on your installation, do you want to download the stable diffusion something something, then you just click yes. Now that I have deinstalled Python, let's try running it again. As I mentioned, it's asking me to download the diffusion 1.5 base model. Of course, you want to click yes and then just wait a bit more. As you can see, it's finally installing. As mentioned previously, I had some R error, so I had to restart my PC because I just deinstalled Python. But as mentioned, click here, yes, and then wait a bit more. Now that it has finally installed, you're going to get this launcher pop up. If you accidentally close it, you just need to reopen this app again. But you might be wondering, what does this mean? Like, what is this simply model? Well, it's also known as checkpoints and pre-trained files that are used to generate a variety of images of the version 1.5 model. It's basically a general purpose model that is suitable for most use cases. However, if you're looking to produce specific styles and aesthetics, there are many specialized models available and we will shortly get to them and we'll be using it in this video. So what I recommend you turn on is auto update web UI, auto update extension and to check if your card has less than 8 gigabytes here's what you need to do. Go to search, type in run, then type in dxdiag. So once you open dxdiag, go to display one, scroll down a bit until you find your graphic card and as you can see my display is 6 gigabytes so I have to turn on the feature and also enable Xformers and then just click launch web UI and as you can see it will start telling a bunch of random stuff you, you will see it's going to start downloading something and you must wait until that's downloaded but be aware it might take a bit of bit of time depending on your internet speed and once everything is downloaded stable diffusion interface should automatically launch on your default browser to run it or you can manually open the web ui user batch file and type this address in your browser this one so you can see this is the new file i was talking about and when it's downloaded you need to go inside the file click on web ui user .bat. as mentioned once you add the web user .bat file this is the location of your program so if it doesn't open automatically like it did for me just copy paste this and copy it into your browser okay so let's get started in this video you're going to be using this feature image to image click on it so here you will find all currently diffusion models but at the moment we only have this one but i want to use something different so that it gives that animation or cartoon style so we will be using this Arkane Diffusion, which is inspired by the popular Arcade series. I'll of course leave a link to the model in the description. So, to download it, go to Files and Versions and look for Arcane Diffusion v3. Checkpoint. Then, click on this arrow, click Save Link As. Then, you want to go to the Stable Diffusion Web UI folder, search the Models file then click on stable diffusion and then copy paste the path and save it right over here. Of course it's going to take some time depending on your internet speed. Now that it's installed 
go back to your stable diffusion and just click on this arrow to refresh it. Then click on the drop down menu and select the new Arcane Diffusion V3. Give it a moment to process it and great. Now that it's selected, go to settings, go to face restoration and drag this all the way to zero. And this will allow us to keep the stylized face as close as possible to the original one. Then click apply. Then you want to head over to user interface. Look for the quick settings list. Add a comma and type in inpainting dash mask dash weight. Now if you write it out and it doesn't let you save it because when you click away it just disappears. Just type in mask underscore w and click on the first thing so that it says in painting mask weight. Then click apply settings. Then what you need to do is click reload UI. You'll maybe notice that we added a new bar right over here and what you want to do is set it to zero for this example. Now the next thing you need to have is you need to have individual frames of the video you are going to use. Now there are many ways to transform the video to images and I use Adobe Media Encoder for that. I'm sure there are other softwares available online that can do this for you as good as a media encoder. So if you have a video and the media encoder, click on the plus icon to import it, find the video, open it up, then click on the settings and here what you want to do is change the format to PNG. You can also lower the frame rate to save some time. So to do this just click on this and Let's make it around 15 frames. Of course, you want to use render at maximum depth and use maximum render quality. Now, of course, with the output name, you can give it a new name. Let's just call it a uh, new video example, or you can create a new folder for it. So it looks much better. So you create new folder, you open it and you save it. I mean, the reason you want to do that is because you will get a lot of images. So it's better if it's like inside one file, than like scattered all over your downloads or whatever. Then just click OK and click on this green icon to start exporting it. And then just wait a few moments. As you can see, it's completed. If I open my file I created, as you can see, I got all of the images exported. Then you want to go back to Stable Infusion, click Image to Image, click here to upload it. And what I recommend you is that you only choose one frame that is the best, that is like sharp and it's not blurry and has the most elements from the scene visible. So I'm going to choose this one. Then what you want to do is click on Interrogate Clip and wait for it to process it. Oh, one more thing I forgot to mention is that you need to add your prompt here. So we can say, also, if you wanted to use the Arcane style, make sure to say Arcane style. Then make sure that the width and the height ratio matches the image. And keep in mind, the longer the image is, the more it will take to process. Let's keep everything else the same and then let's click on generate. Now I had to change the image, so let's add a new image to it. Let's use the same logic. As you can see, once I click interrogate clip, it gave us a description. It thinks it's correct. If you see something that's not correct, you can just delete it. And as well, make sure you type in arcane style. And then we click on generate. Now keep in mind that it might look uh, really cool, but if we apply this effect to the entire clip, it won't look consistent. Now, for example, if we reduce the denoising strength and click on generate again, you can see that the image got a little bit closer to the original image. And this is because the denoising strength indicates how much AI can be creative. And the lower the value, the AI will stick very close to the original image. Now let's talk about another important feature, which is this CFG scale. This setting dictates how strictly the AI must stick to the text prompt at this stage. It's important to experiment with different values for both settings until you get a desired look. 
So if each time you click generate and you get like a very different image, that's going to be a bit of a problem when it comes to the final video. So let me show you my best settings that have helped me, but keep in mind that you don't have to use the exact same settings. You can try to take approach with like an experimental mindset and be patient because every input will require different settings. So what setting worked for me is that I use LMS Karnas. I put sampling size to around 10. I put a G CFG scale to one. I put the denoising strength to 0.7. Then I click on script. Then I click on image to image alternate test. Then I disable these two options, this as well. I drag this all the way to 10. And I also apply this setting, the Sigma adjustment. And then let's click on generate again. As you can see, it looks pretty good, but there is no poll, but this is much better than the last ones. So if you play around with the sampling size, if we go the higher, it's going to be more cartoonish. If we go lower, it should be closer to the original image. Of course, as mentioned previously, you need to try and find the sweet spot for the effect you're trying to achieve. And I mean, that's what makes this process a bit challenging, but fun at the same time. Now, if you are satisfied with how this looks like, go here and click on to reuse the same seed of this particular output. Now, this particular output may not be necessary for this context, but it usually helps to ensure consistency across the other frames. Then what you want to do is go to batch. You want to input your directory. Basically, this is where it's currently. And this is the output. So let's give it a name. And then just click on generate. Don't be afraid if the preview looks a little bit weird. It's still processing its stuff. If you want to take a look at the process, just go to the folder you told it to save and just monitor the progress. So now to turn these clips into an actual video, I like to use Adobe After Effects. And the reason I love to use it is because it has a specific plugin that helps me achieve even more consistency. Now that you have opened Adobe After Effects, right click on here, click on import file, find your file. So in my case, it's this video out. Select the first one, make sure that PNG sequence is enabled and click import. Then right click on the image, click on interpret footage, click on main and change the frame rate to whatever your export was. If you recall, we exported it at 15 frames per second. Click OK. Now drag and drop the sequence right over here to create a new composition. And this way you can preview the animation. Now, if you still see some inconsistency and you want to fix that, then we head over to this website. I'm going to leave a link down below and download it for Windows. Once you install the Flickr, go to effects and presets, type in the Flickr and if it's installed, you should see it right over here. And you should drag and drop the D Flickr high speed to the clip. Now, if you are happy with what you have, click on Composition and then add to Adobe Media Encoder Queue. Then what you want to do is add this to a video format and then of course use maximum render quality and render at maximum depth. Next, of course, choose where you want to save the video. You can name it whatever and click OK and then export it. If we take a look at the video, it looks like this. It's not the best video because I didn't use a great example. It would be much better if you have a video of something that's happening frame by frame and not someone just uh, sitting like here. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you want to support the channel, click the first link in the description and also leave a like, comment, subscribe. Bye bye.